Hi, so this um, video is just going to go through um, math spec and what you need to know for um, A-level um, from the first topic that we did. Um, this is for um, current LXL um, syllabus. So um, basically with the math spec, you don't need to know the, um, the inner workings of how the math spec actually works anymore. You just need to be able to um, analyse the spectrum that you're given. So in the first um, topics then, you just need to be able to um, analyse it for um, elements, okay? So either monatomic or we'll go on to diatomic, I'll go on to as well, okay? So with a monatomic element, so our mass spec, basically just um, a sample gets injected um, and vaporised and it gets bombarded with um, this high-speed electron gun, okay? And this electron gun ionises our sample because the electrons are so kind of fast-moving it knocks off an electron from our whatever we've got, okay? So we're going to use boron as our example. So imagine I um, inject a sample of boron into my mass spec. It gets bombarded with these electrons, okay? And um, the atoms get ionised, okay? The reason we want them to be ionised is that only um, those that have become ions are actually going to be detected, okay? So it travels through our mass spec once it's been ionised and then depending on its mass, okay, it gets deflected around our mass spec and depending on the mass um, to charge ratio, all right, that I'll talk about um, shortly, it's going to get detected by our detector plate and then um, a line is going to come up basically on our spectra, depending on the mass of that sample. So hopefully you're aware that there's isotopes um, where elements such as boron, okay, has an isotope where some of it weighs 10 and some of it happens to weigh 11. You'll know them with chlorine. Yep, some of it is 35, some of it weighs 37. Carbon, you've got carbon 12, you've got carbon 13. A lot of them have naturally occurring isotopes. So this is what the mass spec is able to do for us. It's able to work out, okay, how much of it then has, does weigh, so for boron, how, how much of it does weigh um, 10, how, how much of it does weigh 11. If we know that information, we can then do a really simple calculation, which I'll show you. Um, where you can calculate the relative atomic mass of that element, okay? So, our spectra then that's created by our um, mass spec looks like this. So we have our relative abundance on the y-axis, and this at the bottom is our mass to charge ratio, okay? You often see it like that. And so all this means is that when we ionise our sample, it's going to get given a charge, isn't it? And most of it is going to get given a charge of one plus, okay? Just one electron is going to get knocked off that sample, giving it a charge of one plus, okay? So here, it's picked up that, ooh, some of it weighs 10, okay? So this here then, um, we imagine that it has a mass of 10 and a charge of one. So 10 over one gives us the 10, okay? It could get doubly ionised, okay, and end up with a charge of two plus, but we're not going to worry about that for now, okay, but it is a really good way that the exam boards can kind of extend you with that knowledge, okay? But um, I'll hopefully talk about that in, um, in a separate video, okay? So what we've got here then is that we've got our relative abundance and we've got our mass to charge ratio. So this is telling me that so much of my sample weighed 10 and so much of my sample weighed 11, okay, of my boron sample that I injected into my mass spec. So I'm going to add on then the relative abundance on here, because obviously I haven't bothered with the scale up the y-axis, all right? So the relative abundance of our um, boron that weighs 10, all right? Um, so with a relative mass of 10 um, is 20%. And then that that weighs 11 is 80%. So we can say that then from our mass spec, 20% of naturally occurring boron then actually weighs 10, all right? and 80% of it weighs 11. And I've tried to show this with kind of the, um, by the sizes of the peaks, okay? So the peaks do show you the relative abundance, how much of it is there, all right? So you can see this peak is smaller because only 20% of it happens to weigh 11, sorry, a 10, and then this peak is bigger because 80% of it weighs um, 11, all right? So how you need to be able to use this information is to be able to calculate then your relative atomic mass because that's the numbers, isn't it, that appears on the periodic table for your mass number, they've already done that calculation for us. At GCSE, you only had um, chlorine and copper, where it actually gave you to the decimal place, and the rest we just rounded, whereas at A-level, 
um, you usually get given a periodic table, don't you, with you with all of them to two decimal places. Why? Because of these naturally occurring isotopes that occur. Okay. So what we do with these numbers then to calculate our relative atomic mass, and you often see it shorthanded to that. Okay, big capital A, and then this kind of subscript R. We do a really simple calculation that you've hopefully come across before anyway. We do our relative abundance times mass for each of our isotopes. So this sample has just got two isotopes, haven't it, because it's got two peaks. That is what this mass spec is telling me, all right? So for elements, the number of peaks is the number of isotopes that we've got, all right? So we've got two isotopes. My first one, there's 20% of it, and it weighs 10, okay? And I'm going to add that to my other one. So I've got 80% of it weighing 11, okay? And then I divide that then um, by 100 because my relative abundance happened to be 100% overall, all right? So I divide that by 100 and you can plug that into your calculator and it should come out as 10.8, okay? So the actual relative atomic mass of boron then calculated from these numbers happens to be 10.8 from just doing this simple sum, okay? Okay, so we're also going to look at it for a um, diatomic element. So we've just had a look at um, a monatomic element, boron, but now we'll look at diatomic. So those are things like chlorine, um, anything in group 7, bromine, iodine, um, oxygen, nitrogen, etc. Yeah. So with these ones then, if they're going to travel through, um, if I inject a sample of chlorine into my mass spec, um, when it gets bombarded with electrons, those two, um, diatomic atoms, they could stay together, okay? Um, and they could get ionised and travel through and get detected, or they could get broken apart by the power of those kind of electrons, okay, but like um, bombarding them, okay, bashing into them. So they can either um, come apart and the individual atoms will then be um, detected, okay? So that is why we have more peaks in our spectra, okay, coming out. So again, we've got relative abundance um, on the y-axis and we have our mass to charge ratio here. And do forgive me for my terrible scale along the bottom, I just wanted to try and kind of fit it on to show you, okay? So with chlorine then, hopefully you're aware of the isotopes that exist, and it is really a good one to just learn the isotopes for, okay? I definitely recommend. So we have chlorine 35, okay? And we have chlorine 37, all right? I'll just pop those there for us. And we can see here, ah, brilliant, we've got peaks, haven't we, of 35 and 37 from our mass spec. So our sample um, has travelled through, these ones then, our diatomic chlorine must have been broken apart, travelled through our um, mass spec and been detected, okay? So we can see that this one here, 35, there's more of it, isn't there, okay? Because my peak is higher, because this is my relative abundance. Abundance is just how much is there, okay, relative to the rest of the sample, all right? So here, um, this is actually 75%, all right? And again, these are ones I would learn chlorine, okay? Um, the abundance is for the isotopes. And then this one has to be 25%, all right? So we could look at it like we did with boron, with these numbers here, okay? And calculate our relative atomic mass of um, our chlorine by doing our mass times abundance, add mass times abundance, divide by 100, and it would come out as 35.5, okay? And if you check your periodic table, that is the number that you would see on your periodic table, okay? However, we've then got these here, okay? And so these peaks are caused by our um, chlorine molecules um, passing through, okay? So we could have them, we're thinking, why have we got these different peaks, though? 70, 72, and 74. All we're doing is just adding up masses, okay? So what masses, then, of my chlorine either 35 or chlorine 37, okay? They're the only isotopes um, that we're worried about right now, all right? 35 and 37 causes a peak at 70, okay? Hopefully, you've realised that it's a 35 and 35, okay? So my chlorine could be travelling through a 35 and a 35, because that equals 70, okay? Just bear in mind, then, if you were doing this in an exam situation and they asked you, okay, what caused the peak at 70, I wouldn't get all the marks for that, okay? Yes, I've realised that it's a 35 and a 35 equals 70, but I have to say that it was positive, okay? because only positive things are going to be detected by our mass spec, okay? That's why we ionise it, remember, all right? So I do have to say that it's positive, all right? My, um, my species, it's often called, okay? So the species that caused this peak at 70 was a 35-35, and I had to show that it was positive, all right? 
So 72 then, we could have then, hopefully you've worked it out, a 35 and a 37, okay? And again, I'll show that it's um, positive, but you could also have it the other way round, okay? So you could have it, I'll just jot it here because I'll run out of room and on the bottom, we could have it as a 35, uh, 37, 35, okay? Both of those equal 72. And then 74, we'd have, wouldn't we? We'd have two 37s passing through together, but remember they'd have been ionised by those high power electrons, okay? High speed electrons. So that equals 74, all right? The last thing to mention then with our diatomic ones would be the ratio of the peaks. So here, we'd got 25% was 37, 75% was 35. So the ratio of these peaks, I've tried to show it, but it should be three to one, yeah? Here then, because we've got more of it, 75% weighs 35, it's gonna be more likely, isn't it, that our uh, molecules passing through are two lots of the 35 joined together, okay? Because they're more abundant. So that's where this peak is the highest. This peak is the lowest because the likelihood of two 37s coming through, because there's only 25% of them in a whole sample, it's going to be much less, okay? So that's kind of why we have these different size peaks. And it is a ratio worth learning. It's in a nine to six to one ratio, okay? So that's just kind of um, to summarise how we can um, use our spectra for our diatomic elements, okay? Um, to work out the which species caused our peaks, okay? So the species that caused these first two peaks, this one would just be my chlorine 35, but again, I'd have to show that it was positive, and this one would be causing my peak there, okay? 